Right now, the country's water crisis might worsen. The Water Community Action Network conducted a water testing week, and there's concern that raw water sources such as streams, rivers, and dams have high levels of E. coli and other bacteria. For more on this, we are joined by uh, Dr. Um, Fer Ferial Adam from the organization. She joins us now virtually just to give us more information. Uh, this, of course, uh, without uh, sounding alarmist, um, but I just want you to let us know as South Africans, should we be concerned uh, in terms of what you found? Um, will you just check, please, Ms. Adam? I think you've muted yourself. We can see your lips moving. Apologies for that. Thank you there for you having go. me on your show. Yeah. Um, I think if we if we look at our tap water, um, we have you know the, the tests show that generally in, urban, in the big urban city areas, it's okay. But I do think we need to start raising the concern about um, our water sources. So you know we get our water for drinking from rivers, streams, and dams, and if that's polluted, it means spending a lot more money to try and clean it. Um, and so it, it definitely is a red flag in terms of what we see. Mm. And there was something that, that I read in your report mm -hmm. about uh, particularly uh, areas in Randburg, um, you know, the uh, uh, threat of bacteria making its way into our taps. Please just elaborate that further for mm -hmm. us. I think it, it wasn't about in Randburg making its way to the taps. What we were saying is that if we continue with the kind of power and uh, water shedding that we're experiencing in South Africa right now or in Johannesburg or Gauteng specifically, we, there is a fear that as the levels of the reservoir goes down that there could be contamination because what also happens is as they switch on the system, the pressure could result in more um, pipe leaks and pipe bursts, which then exposes it to um, outside elements. So that's something that we're saying is a concern and we need to continue to test tap water. We need to get all South African citizens testing tap water. Mm. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, you know, you're hearing some people in their community WhatsApp groups talking about having no water at the moment, of course, after the warning from, um, you know, organizations such as Rand Water last week. Uh, is this going to be mm -hmm. an even bigger problem if, if ESCOM doesn't sort itself out? Because they're also being blamed for, um, you know, water not being able to actually yeah. be treated properly. I mean, I think that we can put all, you know, we want to blame ESCOM because that's the devil at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I think that we also need to ask ourselves, why was there such poor planning in terms of our water? Yeah. And that is a concern. Um, low shedding didn't start yesterday. Yeah. It's been an ongoing issue and we could have done with better in terms of planning for it. Um, it's understood that the way we deal with water is not the same as with electricity. So you can't just switch on a light or switch on and then you've got your power back. It's a little bit more complicated than that and we understand that. But the people or the people in, in, in the city of, you know, city of Joburg Water, Grand Water, should be planning around this. And I think um, communication is key because a lot of us don't really know what's going on. But, you know, they keep saying that they, this is the issue, this is why we have um, water shedding. It's not enough. It's how did we get here mm. that we need the answers to. Mm. So your investigation <clears throat> spread across uh, numerous provinces, right? Your Gauteng, Limpopo, KZN, etc. <laughs> you are also most importantly in the Eastern Cape and the Northwest, which are the two countries that have actually displayed problems in terms of uh, you know, the scare about uh, reaching day zero. What did you find in these two provinces? Look, I think that um, the low levels of water uh, does, does affect uh, uh, our access to water. But I think what we found, which was just shocking, is that almost every open source water that was tested in Eastern Cape and Western Cape had high levels of E. coli mm. and total coliform bacteria. So even your areas that are used for recreation, like close to beaches and those kind of things, and we're not hearing enough of this. Why are municipalities not testing, or they probably are testing, but not telling people, which is what they're supposed to be doing? We need to have access to that information as ordinary citizens. We need to know how to keep safe. Mm.
Mm. And, uh, you know, just explain to us in terms of uh, what you said earlier, that uh, load shedding has always, has uh, something that has always been there, but uh, it's, it's more of a problem now, and our planning as a country is what is more disappointing. Uh, does load shedding exacerbate the problem? Yeah, it does exacerbate the problem because you need to pump water over a period of time. And yeah. if you have load shedding over that, then you're not getting the pressure, mm. you're not getting the quantity of water that you need in your reservoirs. So that is definitely a concern. Um, you know, there's, there's this study that was done some time back, which says that by 2025, South Africa will not have enough clean drinking water. Mm. And I think that if we carry on in this particular way, that is going to be a reality, actually. And we're going to have to go back to the days of cholera mm. and having to boil our water first before actually uh, drinking it or cooking with it, etc. Uh, just lastly and very quickly um, for me, uh, we've been told by government so many times, the different ministers that have taken over the Water and Sanitation Department have said that South Africa is a water-scarce country. Is this true? Yes, indeed it is. It's, it's a water scarce country in more ways than just geographically mm. of where we're placed right now. Um, you know, if we look at the global average of, uh, I think it's about 800 millimeters, um, we way lower, we, we almost half of that in terms of rainfall. So we definitely are a water scarce country in terms of geographically where we're situated, but we're also a water scarce country in terms of access. Yeah. So, you know, it's only less than 40, well, less than 50 percent, almost 46 percent of people in South Africa have taps in their houses. Mm. And that is about access and it's about scarcity as well in terms of how do we get, how do we broaden that access to mm. people?